Ace is a guitarist, songwriter, producer, educator, author and presenter and has been the guitarist in UK rock phenomenon Skunk and Nancy since 1994. As one of the biggest rock bands in Britain and Europe throughout the 90s, they sold over 6 million records and performed sell-out world tours. In addition, he's the head of industry partnerships and business development for the Institute of Contemporary Music Performance and is still touring as well as balancing a busy family life. Um, and Ace has taken some time out today to join me for the Aware Now United edition. Welcome, Ace. Hello, how are you? Really great. Great to see you. Um, Ace, let's get straight into it. You have been a guitarist for Skunk and Nancy for more than 25 years now, yeah. and the band is as popular as it's ever been. Um, what does it feel like to be part of something that's so successful? It's amazing, right? Because, you know, I'm the kind of person that blessed the day for anything. You know, I look in my garden and it's been raining and it's really green. I'll go, that's amazing. So to be in a band for so long that's so successful, right? And has changed so many things as well. It's quite incredible. It's like, you know, you've got to look at it like as if you're, you've won some lottery and you're in some kind of elite society or something, because it's like, you know, to be recognized for your music is one thing, right? That That's amazing. You, you make music and people really like it. And then to have a message in it that changes things is, is really incredible as well. We've always been quite radical and we've always said what we thought and we've managed to, you know, actually, build a fan base rather than lose them and um and then to to make money from it is is really incredible as well so for it to be your kind of like mainstay job for so many years um it's really incredible i mean in theory i could just be in a band right and just live off that and have a certain kind of lifestyle but I, i'm kind of one of those people that knows that there's more than you know that many hours in a day that you work on the music so i'm always doing something else so it could be other projects anything from you know merchandising to my full-time job working at a college because it does create that space but being in a band that's so successful is a blessing it's amazing and going around the world and meeting so many people and having so many experiences that you would never even get like one tenth of that in a lifetime is is fascinating and really um energizing kind of journey really amazing and you mentioned um obviously your new role at um icmp there your your passion for music and education has really come together over the years and i know you're always busy um and also uh, you know various roles at music institutes um including the recent move and um, you've been a constant support over the years to the global youth awards uh, which has been absolutely amazing why is it that you think providing music education and recognition is so important particularly with young people well, it's because, you know, everything we do, right, we have to be taught one way or another, you see, and right, even when we're kids and someone teaches us to play an instrument or teaches us to do a certain thing, you know, or we go to go to college to learn business studies so that we can have businesses that we can su survive on our own in or join a company and be successful things like that. So why not music education? I mean, when I grew up, it was all about teaching yourself, right? And what happens is when you teach yourself, it's it's amazing but at the same time you have gaps in your knowledge and it takes you longer to get anywhere because you don't know the way to go and you don't know the people to ask and the things to do so you know if I said to you right now start your own kind of like banking business on your own you couldn't just go well I'll just kind of make it up as I go along you'd have to have some kind of input some kind of education so why not in this industry that it's a massive global industry it's not just a hobby you know why not be educated and, and have a you know an accelerated footing into your next career create portfolio careers within that you know that's another thing you can go well i can do this and i can do other things at the same time and also the educators we're using are people that are dual professionals they're all in the industry as well so it's really important that those industry people who are actually doing it and you know walk the walk are with the students and helping them to not only learn an instrument and master the craft of that in a, in a right the right kind of way but also to provide like a career that's sustainable for their whole lives you know and and how many stories have we heard about people that do things they they don't have enough knowledge they kind of teach themselves and they burn out or they they come up against brick wall and they say i have to give up music now because it didn't work for me. So in theory, with music education, it, you don't have to do that. You can carry on doing music for all your life. And music is an amazing thing to do for a career. It's so rewarding. 
yeah i love that and and actually i completely agree with you that it shouldn't be treated any differently from um any other core subjects and actually if we've seen anything over the last year and a half it's how important the arts are right because yeah what would we have done without them um also i know you know your husband and a father um you know balancing all your touring and and working at the college and everything else that you do outside of that um your work schedule must be insane um i know you're really dedicated to having time with your family as well so i'm really curious how do you create balance with such a busy life you know what at first it seems like madness but then you you realize first of all you have to you have to weigh things up right the pros and cons you know and and work out what is important first to that takes your time okay so when you become a dad and you have a family we cannot deny it we have to pay the bills right anybody whether you're a dad or a mum someone having a family has to pay the bills they can't just go to tesco and someone says oh i love your new record please take all the food for free it doesn't work like that does it right you have to pay the bills so first of all important is you have to pay the bills so that takes a certain amount of your time so you can't deny that time but with all the other things and the projects that, that you do you've got to say is this worth the amount of time I'm spending on this against what time I'm not having with my family? Because with kids, they grow up and then they go into the world and that special time that you've spent all your time and effort on has gone, right? So what I find is uh, having a full-time job for a start um, really works for me because kids go to school, don't they? So from 8.30 in the morning till 4.30 in the daytime, you're not gonna see them anyway. So you're not gonna spend that time with them. So use that time first of all right then with all of my other pursuits like the band music demoing i've got a merchandise company i write books i do workshops all these things like that i kind of do it at the same time they're doing things so if you imagine like it's a bit different when i was a kid it was a bit like you go and do your thing right you got lots of spare time but a lot of kids today there's so much access to things for them whether it's through a youth service or whether it's a paid private lesson they do so much more so my kids, for instance, they go to Saturday school and they learn Japanese because my wife is Japanese. So on Saturday, Saturday mornings, they're at school. So what I do is I work on my merchandise company. All right. And that's when I do all the drawings and do all the parts for that. Um, you know, in the evenings, they might have tennis or um, piano lesson or my son's doing some maths lessons as well. So when they're doing that stuff, I'll go, right, okay, I'm going to get on and do my Skunk Lancy stuff, you know, maybe playing, rehearsing guitar, writing some songs, right? So basically, I use all the time when they're busy to make myself busy. And then as soon as we got a space, that's when we do stuff. So if it's the weekends and we go out somewhere, or it's going on holiday, obviously, or it's half term and things like that, or even when, you know, when your daughter comes in and says, Dad, let's play, go and play, because that time won't come back to you. So I'm quite... I'm very good at offsetting stuff as well. And then you get the other time where they go to sleep, right? They're in bed, right? And then that's like the, your late night kind of like, you can watch a bit of TV or you can write a bit of a song and things like that. But I'm, I'm very good at offsetting stuff because I live by the calendar. I put everything in lists and calendars. I live by that. But then if my daughter comes in and says, dad, I've got an hour off, do you want to play? Right, I will go, okay. And I'll just look at the calendar and I go, right, okay, that hour there, I'm going to do it at 10 o'clock tonight instead. So I always prioritise my children because when you look at it, the reason I work so hard is because I want to provide for my family. So it would be kind of stupid if I never did anything with them, wouldn't it? You know? Amazing. So yeah, work hard, play hard, isn't it? Yeah, I love that. And I love the the fact that you're, you've got it so worked out that you can go, right, I can take that hour and slot it there. Because um, too many parents, especially now with all of the distractions, the yeah. kids come in and they want that attention and they're not getting it. So I love the fact that you're like, okay, you want to play? Let's go play. Yeah, it's a real art though. It took me a long time to get to this place, you know. It took me a lot of time saying, I'm busy. Sorry, I can't do that now. I'll do it later, mm -hmm. you know. And I did do it later, but you know, it was always like kind of, oh, well, okay, I'll finish now, I'll go and do that with you. And they were waiting. So I like to take, the art now is to take the weight away and, and just displace what you're doing and, and put it back into the calendar in another way. But you said time management and you know, all that stuff is not easy. It's not, it's something that you learn through your life, I think. 
Yeah, amazing, absolutely amazing. And then, um, you know, just thinking about the last year and a half in particular, because obviously that's been a really strange one. I'm sure that um, you've been able to spend a lot more time with the family then as well. But um, it's been a really, really strange time. And I know I mentioned earlier that I don't know how we would have got through it with the arts. And I think that that's, you know, that's been really demonstrated how important it is. But there will be quite a lot of people, especially young people that are considering a career in the arts and what's happened over the last year and a half with venues shutting and everything um, will have made them slightly concerned or maybe anxious about going into that industry. Um, what advice would you offer them? You know, how can we how can we make them feel more confident about that? Well, the thing is, um, first of all, the arts will never go away, right? It will never go away from painting a picture to writing a song. Don't worry, it's always going to be there, right? And just think of what a dull place the world would be without any art, OK? So if it's your calling, you need to do it because the world needs it for a start, right? Um, also, uh, at the moment, um, it's like, it's, it's, I suppose it's a new time to get involved in it because what happened with the, the lockdown, it's kind of blown open some doors that never existed, right, into a new way of getting stuff across. So the way that... You know, people are getting more inventive with the business. There's there's these new income streams popping up and there's new access to stuff and there's different audiences that we never, you know, had before and all the online stuff and all the tools, the digital tools that have been created by companies for musicians to use that didn't exist two years ago. You know, all the streaming platforms and, you know, synchronization in music didn't happen before across platforms. All these things have made it, one, a really exciting time to get involved two you've got a massive global global audience and also it's something new it's not just going like oh let's just be doing what we've been for the tw last 20 years because we can do that it's a bit like well we've got all that last 20 years and we've got a whole new place open up for people now in the arts so and that nft whatever they're talking about as well and it's all this stuff of digital currency blockchain it's actually an amazing time to get in because you can now become one of the first of a new wave. And it's like anything, when something new comes, you know, if you're the first ones on that thing, um, you, you're usually the winners. So it, as I said, it's, it's don't lose hope, you know? And also I, I think at the end of the day, right? For thousands of years, right? <laughs> thousands of years, we have been, as humans, we've been going to concerts and we've been, doing art and all this art, one year of a lockdown is not going to change a thousand years of history. I guarantee you in about a year's time, it'll all be banging like it was before. So it's, you know, never lose faith. Yeah, well, and, I, and I think I, I completely agree. The innovation that's come out of it as a result, you know, when we did a, the Global Youth Awards and we did them, we had people joining from all over the world instead of having little pockets in places. And I think a lot of people have found their creativity because they've been in lockdown. So a lot of people are really realizing how important it is, not just as something, you know, but for mental health as well. I think it's a really yeah. important thing, music and the arts. So yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you. And um, you mentioned your merchandise and business, which I've seen and I love the stuff that you've done. Um, we'll include the links to that because um, I, everyone should go and check it out. It's really amazing. And I know you've got some tour dates, some actual live tour dates in the yeah. diary for Skunk and Nancy as well, which is brilliant. Yeah, there's loads. <laughs> yeah, loads. I, I had, a, had a look. Um, a lot of them um, in the UK, I noticed, because obviously we need to wait and see what's happening in the world. Oh, well, no, no, no it's, it's announced now. So is announced right so the tour it goes from uh the 4th of march to the 27th of april and it goes right way across europe and then after that there's glastonbury isn't there and meltdown festival coming back and all these things as well so it's actually a huge tour and dates more dates are coming because obviously 2022 is going to open out in the festivals as well so next year is going to be a, a monster year for skunk and Nancy, which is great so it gives me a year to work on this new job and get everything established there and then this is the beauty of the arts isn't it right traveling now and using the internet and all this stuff is better than it's ever been so it means i can go on tour and i can still be in touch with everybody and the you know the partners and the sponsors and all these kind of things at the same time as touring whereas it would have been even two years ago it was a little more difficult than it is now so it's it's you know the the world is just like it's your oyster at the moment i think yeah oh my gosh and it's going to be so exciting i think you know i've got a couple of festivals booked in for this year and um i'm just keeping everything crossed that they're going to go ahead but i think you know it, the emergence of people coming out and enjoying live music is just going to be we're going to appreciate it a lot more than we oh, ever yeah, yeah. 
yeah so that's absolutely brilliant thanks so much ace um for joining me today uh that's absolutely brilliant i'm going to uh, share the link so um, we'll put in any links to your merchandise to the tour yeah. deck that you've got and anything else that you want to share and i really highly recommend that people go and check it out and see it thanks so much for joining us today pleasure have a great evening <laughs>